Hello everybody and thank you for joining our GET briefing on China's outward investment. My name is Cora Jungblut from Bertelsmann Stiftung, which is the largest private operating foundation in Germany. I am working on macroeconomic developments in Asia, especially China, with a focus on trade and investment. In this briefing, I will look at recent trends of foreign direct investment or FDI from China in terms of geographical distribution, the motives behind these investments and the role of the Chinese government. I would also like to look at the challenges and the opportunities of Chinese FDI for host countries such as Germany, which has been among the top three destinations for Chinese investment in the European Union for years now. Looking at China's outward FDI, we can see that uh, China's FDI, not only to Europe, has been on the rise in recent years. Whereas the Chinese government mainly promoted FDI in China when it initiated its policy of reform and opening at the end of the 1970s, its focus has gradually shifted to also supporting Chinese companies going global. By now, China has caught up with major outward investors such as Japan and Germany. In 2015, China ranked second in global FDI flows and 10th in FDI stock. The economic policy behind these developments is called the Going Global Strategy which the Chinese government proclaimed already in 2000 and which has become an important focus of China's reform agenda. Core goals of the strategy include access to markets, cutting-edge technology and natural resources. The Chinese government regards FDI in developed countries in particular as an important, important prerequisite to China's progressing in the global value chain and to reducing the country's reliance on exports. Companies whose FDI projects fit into the going global strategy also obtain access to various forms of political support, such as easier access to credit, for example. In addition, the Chinese Ministry of Commerce has set up a website to bundle together all the information and services related to foreign investment. The Going Global Public Service Platform, of which you see a screenshot here, provides companies and other actors involved in international investment activities with country-specific investment guidelines, legal documents and policy guidelines for download. It is also possible to initiate certain administrative steps online. From the Chinese perspective, increasing outward FDI is a normal and necessary development in order to balance FDI flows to and from China. Western multinationals have been investing large sums in China for about three decades, whereas Chinese companies have only just started to invest abroad and are in a catching up process in terms of internationalization. China has welcomed foreign capital and now expects Chinese capital outflows to be welcome abroad too. However, the strong state influence on China's economy and the suspicion that Chinese outward investment to at least some degree is guided by the Chinese government too, have made recipient countries, especially developed countries such as Germany, less welcoming of these investments recently. And the question if Chinese FDI and state-backed FDI in general pose a threat to national security and requires new reg regulations has received a high degree of attention recently. If we take a look at China's global FDI stocks, we can see indeed that they are still dominated by state-owned enterprises but their share has been down from 80% in 2006 to about 50% in 2015. And the number of Chinese companies doing business abroad shows that companies of other types of ownerships dominate. However, it is difficult to really distinguish between state-owned and non-state-owned companies, since state capital can be found in other types of ownership too, for example, in limited liability or shareholding companies. Moreover, informal networks between the party state and the business would continue to play an important role in China, but they are very hard to estimate. 
Hence, even Chinese private businesses cannot solely be considered economic players who are exclusively pursuing economic motives. One can therefore understand the rising concerns regarding Chinese FDI, especially among developed countries such as Germany, which see themselves as market economies with a minimum degree of state intervention in the economy. Chinese FDI in these countries is a rather new phenomenon too, which gained momentum after the introduction of the global, Going Global Strategy in 2000, which actively promotes investment in industrialized countries. In recent years, these have become an important destination for Chinese FDI. However, starting from a very low level and still low in terms of their relative share in total FDI from China, which you can see on the slide here. So FDI to developed countries have quite a bit of growth potential in the next decade and will most probably um, increase, especially in the U European Union and the US. According to our projection, which was done by the Prognos Research Institute, uh, based on data by the Chinese Ministry of Commerce, both regions combined could receive about 38% of China's annual FDI outflows in, 2000, uh, in, uh, in 2025. Germany has been among the top three goals of China's FDI to Europe in the last decade, and it will continue to take a large chunk of it. So which are the motives behind Chinese investors going to Germany? Above all, they seek access to technology and cutting-edge know-how, which they easily find among Germany's hidden champions, that is, technological world market leaders. Chinese businesses also hope to profit from the high-quality labor made in Germany, which enjoys an excellent reputation in China and also worldwide. Investing in Germany also bears the promise to gain access not only to the German market itself, but also to the common market of the European Union, with a population of about 500 million and a relatively high purchasing power. Last but not least, Chinese investors will find an open, non-discriminatory investment environment in Germany, which offers a level playing field to both domestic and foreign companies. Something which, vice versa, German companies in China will search for in vain. This lack of reciprocity is one of the reasons why the recent buying spree of Chinese companies in Germany has given rise to a controversial discussion on how to deal with these acquisitions. The fact that many of them target German high-tech companies and the ongoing suspicion of the Chinese government being involved to at, least some, to at least some degree has contributed to an increasing scepticism regarding takeovers of German companies by Chinese firms. In some recent cases, they have even become subject to government review. These concerns are not entirely ungrounded if you look at Chinese acquisitions in Germany between 2014 and 2016. We can see that about 10% were conducted by companies directly controlled by the Chinese government, or more specifically, the state-owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission, SISEC. Before 2014, SISEC did not play a significant role in M&A in Germany. So takeovers directly backed by the state have increased, and this is true not only for Germany, but also for many other EU member states. However, I have to emphasize that this issue is mainly related to M&A, that is mergers and acquisitions, and not so much to Greenfield Investment, which is the larger chunk of Chinese investment in Germany. It definitely is necessary to have an open and detailed discussion on how to deal with possibly state-backed acquisitions of high-tech companies, not only on the national but also on the EU level. At the same time, it is important not to overlook the positive effects of Chinese direct investment. And we should keep in mind that Chinese investment in Germany is still tiny in terms of numbers. 
China holds only 0.3% of the total FDI stock in Germany. So to sum up, I would like to briefly assess both opportunities and challenges that come along with Chinese investment in Germany, but also in other developed host countries. Drawing from German experience, Chinese investors tend to induce positive employment effects. They have sustained local jobs and created additional employment opportunities. Chinese companies often bring along fresh capital and have a long-term strategic interest in Germany as business location. German small and medium-sized companies acquired by a Chinese investor profit from improved access to the Chinese market and in some cases have done better with a strategic investor from China than with a short-term oriented financial investor from other developed countries. From a macroeconomic perspective, increased bilateral investment flows may intensify the economic relations between Germany and the important Chinese market. Turning to the challenges now, Aside from the issue of state influence, which I already mentioned above, there are some other challenges that remain. The differences in corporate cultures, as well as in the economic, legal and political system between China and Germany, are strong and hard to deal with in everyday business. However, this is true not only for Chinese investors, but for any foreign investor. Since many of the acquisitions we are talking about have happened in the last two to three years, we do not know anything yet about the long-term development of these investment projects. There still is the chance that a sale of German technology might happen in the end. But then again, this would not be a development specifically related to Chinese investors. In the end, the most important challenge related to Chinese FDI is the lack of reciprocity. As mentioned above, Germany offers Chinese investors free market access and has no general protection mechanism for key technologies. In contrast, the Chinese government deliberately protects strategic industries from foreign access. This means that German businesses in China encounter numerous barriers from both formal and informal and in comparison to domestic businesses are often discriminated against. Even 15 years after China's entry into the World Trade Organization in 2001, there is still no level playing field in sight for German-Chinese economic relations. In principle, both sides can profit from FDI. Key prerequisites for that to happen are open markets and fair competition conditions. If China, as one of the most important global players, systematically contravenes them, a fundamental solution needs to be found here. The key lies in finding a path between a naive sell-out of German and European interests and protectionist actionism. However, Germany and the European Union still need to find this path. If you are interested in uh, more detailed information and uh, more detailed analysis on this issue, you can also download our related study which was published um, last year and is uh, free of charge. You may find it on, on the website of the Bertelsmann Stiftung. Now I would like to thank you for joining us today and I hope you will also join us for one of our uh, next GET briefings which will be announced on our project website. If you are interested, you may also sign up for our monthly newsletter at www.get-project.de. Thank you and goodbye.